We hope you have been enjoying Get in the Word with Truth's Table. Now, we'd love your feedback on future projects, so please respond to the survey in the show notes and you can be entered to win a bundle of books in honor of Black History Month from IVP. This is IVP. Listening to Get in the Word with Truth's Table. Your word is truth, your word is life. Presented by Inner Varsity Press. Your word is truth, your word is life. A daily audio Bible podcast read by Dr. Christina Edmondson and Akemeni Uwan. Let's get in the Word, and may the Word get in us. Open our eyes that we may behold wonderful things in your Word. Old Testament reading, Exodus chapter 8. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and tell him, This is what the Lord has said. Release my people in order that they may serve me. But if you refuse to release them, then I'm going to plague all your territory with frogs. The Nile will swarm with frogs, and they will come up and go into your house, in your bedroom, and on your bed, and into the houses of your servants and your people, and into your ovens and your kneading troughs. Frogs will come up against you, your people, and all your servants. The Lord spoke to Moses, Tell Aaron, Extend your hand with your staff over the rivers, over the canals, and over the ponds and bring the frogs up over the land of Egypt. So Aaron extended his hand over the waters of Egypt, and frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. The magicians did the same with their secret arts and brought up frogs on the land of Egypt too. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Pray to the Lord that he may take the frogs away from me and my people, and I will release the people that they may sacrifice to the Lord. Moses said to Pharaoh, You may have the honor over me. When shall I pray for you, your servants, and your people, for the frogs to be removed from you and your houses, so that they will be left only in the Nile? He said, Tomorrow. And Moses said, It will be as you say, so that you may know that there is no one like the Lord our God. The frogs will depart from you, your houses, your servants, and your people. They will be left only in the Nile. Then Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh. And Moses cried to the Lord because of the frogs that he had brought on Pharaoh. The Lord did as Moses asked. The frogs died in the houses, the villages, and the fields. The Egyptians piled them in countless heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he hardened his heart and did not listen to them just as the Lord had predicted. Plague 3. Gnats. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, extend your staff and strike the dust of the ground, and it will become gnats throughout the land of Egypt. They did so. Aaron extended his hand with his staff. He struck the dust of the ground, and it became gnats on people and on animals. All the dust of the ground became gnats, throughout all the land of Egypt. When the magicians attempted to bring forth gnats by their secret arts, they could not. So there were gnats on people and on animals. The magicians said to Pharaoh, It is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart remained hard, and he did not listen to them, just as the Lord had predicted. Plague 4. Flies. The Lord said to Moses, Get up early in the morning and position yourself before Pharaoh as he goes out to the water. 
and tell him, This is what the Lord has said. Release my people, that they may serve me. If you do not release my people, then I'm going to send swarms of flies on you, and on your servants, and on your people, and in your houses. The houses of the Egyptians will be full of flies, even the ground they stand on. But on that day I will mark off the land of Goshen, where my people are staying, so that no swarms of flies will be there, that you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of this land. I will put a division between my people and your people. This sign will take place tomorrow. The Lord did so. A thick swarm of flies came into Pharaoh's house and into the houses of his servants. And throughout the whole land of Egypt, the land was ruined because of the swarms of flies. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Go, sacrifice to your God within the land. But Moses said, That would not be the right thing to do. For the sacrifices we make to the Lord our God would be an abomination to the Egyptians. If we make sacrifices that are an abomination to the Egyptians right before their eyes, will they not stone us? We must go on a three-day journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God just as he is telling us. Pharaoh said, I will release you so that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only you must not go very far. Do pray for me. Moses said, I am going to go out from you and pray to the Lord, and the swarms of flies will go away from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people tomorrow. Only do not let Pharaoh deal falsely again by not releasing the people to sacrifice to the Lord. So Moses went out from Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord, and the Lord did as Moses asked. He removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. Not one remained. But Pharaoh hardened his heart this time also and did not release the people. Psalm 20 For the music director, a psalm of David. May the Lord answer you when you are in trouble. May the God of Jacob make you secure. May he send you help from his temple. From Zion, may he give you support. May he take notice of all your offerings. May he accept your burnt sacrifice. Selah. May he grant your heart's desire. May he bring all your plans to pass. Then we will shout for joy over your victory. We will rejoice in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now I am sure that the Lord will deliver his chosen king. He will intervene for him from his holy, heavenly temple and display his mighty ability to deliver. Some trust in chariots and others in horses, but we depend on the Lord our God. They will fall down, but we will stand firm. The Lord will deliver the king. He will answer us when we call to him for help. Proverbs chapter 9 The Consequences of Accepting Wisdom or Folly Wisdom has built her house. She has carved out its seven pillars. She has prepared her meat. She has mixed her wine. She also has arranged her table. She has sent out her female servants. She calls out on the highest places of the city. Whoever is naive, let him turn in here. To those who lack understanding, she has said, Come, eat some of my food, and drink some of the wine I have mixed. Abandon your foolish ways so that you may live, and proceed in the way of understanding. Whoever corrects a mocker is asking for insult. Whoever reproves a wicked person receives abuse. Do not reprove a mocker, or he will hate you. Reprove a wise person, and he will love you. Give instruction to a wise person, and he will become wiser still. Teach a righteous person, and he will add to his learning. The beginning of wisdom is to fear the Lord, and acknowledging the Holy One is understanding. 
For because of me, your days will be many, and years will be added to your life. If you are wise, you are wise to your own advantage. But if you have mocked, you alone must bear it. The woman called Folly is brash. She is naive and does not know anything. And she has sat down at the door of her house, on a seat at the highest point of the city, calling out to those who are passing by her in the way, who go straight on their way. Whoever is naive, let him turn in here. To those who lack understanding, she has said, stolen waters are sweet, and food obtained in secret is pleasant. But they do not realize that the dead are there, that her guests are in the depths of the grave. New Testament reading, Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 29. Ask, seek, knock. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, although you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? In everything, treat others as you would want them to treat you. For this fulfills the law and the prophets. The narrow gate. Enter through the narrow gate, because the gate is wide, and the way is spacious that leads to destruction, and there are many who enter through it. How narrow is the gate, and difficult the way that leads to life, and there are few who find it. A tree and its fruit. Watch out for false prophets, who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are voracious wolves. You will recognize them by their fruit. Grapes are not gathered from thorns or figs from thistles, are they? In the same way, every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree is not able to bear bad fruit, nor a bad tree to bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then, you will recognize them by their fruit. Judgment of pretenders. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many powerful deeds in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Go away from me, you lawbreakers, hearing and doing. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does them is like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the flood came, and the winds beat against that house. But it didn't collapse because its foundation had been laid on rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the flood came, and the winds beat against that house, and it collapsed. It was utterly destroyed. When Jesus finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed by his teaching, because he taught like one who had authority, not like their experts in the law. Luke chapter 6, verses 43 through 45. For no good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. For figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from brambles. The good person, out of the good treasury of his heart, produces good. And the evil person, out of his evil treasury, produces evil. For his mouth speaks from what fills his heart.
This is the Word of God for the people of God. May God add a blessing to the reading of His Word. Let us go boldly to God's throne of grace. Gracious God, our Father, our Friend, our Redeemer, our Healer, and our Guide, we give you thanks and praise today for allowing us to hear your Word. We know that as we listen to your Word, even right now, we are listening amongst a group of people from all around the U.S. and all around the world even. We are your people and we are seeking to know you more through your word today. God, we are seeking that you would empower us by the Spirit, that we might live congruent lives, that who you've called us to be, we would truly be that. We ask that you would purify our hearts right now so that our words would be true and righteous. They would be life-giving. They would be words that are directed and ordered by you. Clean up these hearts so that our speech that flows from them might best reflect who you are and all that you're doing in our lives and through us. We pray, O oh God, that the words that we say would be sincere and true, that we would not be like Pharaoh, saying what we think others want to hear, to take judgment, do judgment away from ourselves, but then changing our minds, going back and showing ourselves to be liars, creating us a clean heart that we might produce clean, speech, words that are true, righteous, O God. Help us to speak like Jesus and grant us the mind of Christ. It is in your name that we pray and entrust ourselves. Amen. We pray this time of getting the word with Truth's Table has encouraged us all to not only be hearers of God's word, but doers. Share your reflections on these scriptures with us on Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag Get in the Word and hashtag Truth's Table. Saints, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Go with God. Get in the Word with Truth's Table is a production of InterVarsity Press. For 75 years, IVP has created and published resources that deepen lives for Christ to engage the university, church, and the world. Visit ivpress.com for more information. Our Bible reading plan is from biblestudytogether.com, and the Bible version is the new English translation used by permission. Sound engineering is from Pottery Studios, and our executive producer is Helen Lee.